Howdy, AP Precal. I am just cranking out the videos today. Okay, so um, I am using, I've already taught this in my class this year. I teach it a little differently, but I thought I would make notes on Mr. Passwater. I would, thought I would make a video using Mr. Passwater's notes. That's what I wanted to say. Um, and so we're talking about transformations of sine functions, sine or, co or cosine. They're both sinusoidal functions. Um, okay, so it says the midline of a sinusoidal function is simply a vertical translation. So what happens is if I take a sine function and I shift it up or down, my midline shifts with everything else. And so wherever, however, the midline had started on my parent function at, at y equals zero. So whatever the shift up or down is will be the new midline. The amplitude is the vertical dilation. So however much I stretch the, fu the function vertically, that's going to give me the amplitude. Um, the period is a result of the, the, the size of the period is a result of how much I've stretched it horizontally. Hang on. <coughs> mm. Sorry, thanks for being patient. That was not a Stanley mug. I don't have any. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, I mean, I don't, but I was just being silly. Okay, um, so given a function, so if we have this function, either sine or cosine, we'll have the vertical dilation will be a factor of A. And so um, he says A represents the amplitude of the graph. I would argue that the absolute value equals the amplitude um, because I can get, um, if I make A negative, then what that will do is instead of going up first um, with my curve, I would go down first. Um, but I don't know to what extent AP will take this, you know, we'll consider this, but that's fine. Okay, a vertical translation of D units is going to shift us up or down D, and then D represents the midline. So I would say that Y equals D is the midline of this graph. Um, a horizontal factor, a horizontal dilation by a factor of the absolute value of 1 over B, and so the period is 2 pi over B. It's kind of funny. I don't put my absolute values here very often. I mean, it's true, but I always put them here, so I guess... We each have our own uh, things we're habitually <laughs> inclined to do. Okay, um, the graph of a sinusoidal, well, par partly, I don't tend to write problems for my kids where B is negative, because, um, well, sine is an odd function. If you make it negative, it does change it. Um, it's, cosine is an even function, which means that if you make it, it, it negative, it doesn't change the essence of the, like, let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, if I have, uh, delete. If I, yes, delete. What are you doing? Okay. If I take sine of negative x, here's sine. This one reflected it over the y-axis. Do you see that? But if I take, if I come back here and say cosine of x, and then I say cosine of negative x, I didn't intend to go down this rabbit hole, but now we are down there. Um, here's cosine, and then the negative, you reflect it. If it was an even function, when it reflected over the y-axis, it stayed the same. Okay. Let's look at this first example. Um, along with, Okay, the function can be written as this. Find the values. Okay, so the amplitude is 6. So h of theta would equal 6. Um, so notice we started the midline, and then our period is pi. So we have 2 pi over b is equal to a period of pi. That means, um, what do I get? That b is equal to 2. So we have sine of 2 theta. Um, and then our midline here is at 3 plus 3. Technically, mathematically, you don't have to put these in parentheses. He did, which is great. Um, sometimes you have to because of the technology, but not because of math notation. Um, yeah, that was good. Let's see the next one. Write an expression. OK. All right, so I see that we've got an amplitude. It's sine. It's starting and going up first and coming back. It got here by pi. That means which that last one just did the exact same thing. Is that the same problem? No, it's not. Okay. Um, so this becomes f of theta would be equal to, we said it has an amplitude of 3. This is sine of 2 theta. And then we move the midline in here is at 3, so it's plus 3. There's that. Okay, uh, the figure up shows the graph of a sinusoidal function g. What are the values of the, for the period and the amplitude? Okay, so I'm looking at, let's see, it starts here at negative pi over 2. If I start here, that's a midline, and it comes back at pi over 2. So the period is pi, so those are wrong. Um, and it says the amplitude is 4 from negative 1 to negative 3 is 2. This is this, The amplitude is not 4, so no, that is the one I should have crossed off. Um, and so the correct answer is A. 
A uh, trig function k has a maximum at that point. Okay, after this maximum, the next minimum occurs at that point. Okay, um, so let's see. If I were to sketch this, pi over 2, 6 is somewhere up here. Pi, negative 4, is somewhere down here. So let's label that. Pi over 2, 6. This is pi, negative 4. And so this had done, I don't know exactly what over here, but and then it changes concavity to do something like, not there, but anyway, whatever. Um, and then, so this half of the period is pi over 2, so the whole period is pi. We keep seeing a, um, a b value. If the period is, if pi equals um, 2 pi over b, that means b equals 2. That's the third problem in a row. Okay, that's fine. Um, and then, I forgot my parentheses. Then, okay, so my b value is 2, which crosses off those. And then um, we're at, the total distance was 10 units apart, so my amplitude is going to be 5. Um, and so it has to be this one. And it was shifted up one because the, this vertical stretch here would, would take one and negative one and pull it apart to five and negative five. And then it shifted it up. So five went up to six and negative five went up to negative four, which is what we have here. Okay, how are we doing? Um, okay, let's do this one more and then I will start the next video at this part. Okay. Um, it says a trig function is given by this. Oh, look, we have another period of b of, excuse me, another b of 2, which gives us a period 2 pi over 2 equals a period of pi. Um, so it's going to do everything it needs to do by pi. That one did everything it's going to do by pi. This one did everything it needs to do by 2 pi. No good. Um, this one, that looks like pi. This one, that looks like pi over 2. No good. Um, okay, so now let's see. That was, I'm just doing these as I see them. So as I think through this, it has an amplitude of three, So if, and then it went down one. This midline is not at negative one, so that's no good. So it better be this. So let's see if this was a well-written problem. Uh, I mean, it has been. I didn't mean it to sound like it did, but sometimes I make mistakes, and sometimes other people do too. Okay, here's my midline at negative one, like they told us. We have an amplitude. We went up one, two, three. Yes, we went down one, two, three, um, and that that's lovely. All right, come back for the next video. Subscribe. Goodbye.